Okay, so uh, thank you everyone. So my name is Jonathan Davis. I'm from the performance team um, working on Zen Server at Citrix. Um, so I care about um, a lot of things uh, to do with uh, performance, um, you know, latency, throughput, but also scalability. And in particular today, I'll be talking about um, scalability in the dimension of VM density. Uh, and I'll be particularly focusing on the improvements that we've made recently in the uh, Zen Server 6.2 release. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by talking about um, expectations from our users. Um, we tend to call our users customers, um, so their expectations are important because they're giving us money if we can meet their expectations. Um, and I'm going to tell us, I'm going, to, I'm going to explain how we met those expectations by removing some of the hard limits and some of the soft limits um, to achieve higher VM densities. And then finally, um, if we've got time, we'll look at some benchmarks um, that, uh, that quantify some of these improvements. Okay, so um, some people just want to run one, one or two, you know, a handful of VMs, but we've got a lot of customers who really care about getting a lot of VMs on their servers. So if you can run N VMs on, um, say, um, you know, uh, a one socket machine, then if you've got a two socket machine, people expect that you can run two N VMs. Well, you've got to have a lot of sympathy for that view. People tend to get a bit upset if you can only run N or N plus a little bit um, if you've just gone and spent double the amount of money on a, on a bit of hardware that's double the size. So the rather unfortunate and, and perhaps embarrassing situation that Zen Server found itself in is that we, we, we really couldn't do that. We weren't scaling with hardware. So people were buying uh, bigger boxes and saying, well, why can't you run twice the number of VMs? Um, so I, I've got the same, same picture here, um, just expressed slightly differently here. Basically, with, um, with previous versions of Zen Server, um, we had hard limits to our VM density that meant that we were uh, not able to exhaust the, um, the theoretical hardware capacity for, um, for modern um, uh, enterprise-grade uh, server hardware. Happily, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about today, uh, in Zen Server 6.2, we've solved that problem. So you can see that there were two things that we, we needed to do. The first thing was we needed to, to move those hard density limits to the right. So you know, completely push the, the hard limits uh, way beyond what people are actually going to experience on, on reasonable hardware. Um, and then the second thing we needed to do is actually then ensure that there's no other soft limits you're going to run into so that you can actually, again, on, on reasonable hardware, you can actually... Um, fill it up with VMs, and you get reasonable performance uh, out of those VMs. So, hard limits. Well, uh, I've got a list of, of, of the hard limits here that we've overcome in Zen Server 6.2. Um, many of them have, have already been alluded to in, in some way today. Uh, you've already had a presentation this morning on event channels, uh, so I, I don't want to duplicate what David has already said, but um, um, one thing that he didn't mention is that... Um, in a, in a 32-bit DOM0, you actually have a limit of only 1,024 event channels. Um, with a 64-bit DOM0, there's four times as many, uh, and that's because of this. Uh, you, you can see in that hash to find there, there's a, there's a swearing going on there. Um, we know that um, there's various VM functions that require event channels. Uh, obviously, th things like um, para-virtualized I.O. Uh, requires event channels. And so it's quite common for typical VMs to require, say, between 5 and 10 event channels ju just for, for sort of normal, everyday VMs. Um, and so if you do the maths there um, and you divide your limit of 1,024 event channels by that number, then, well, I've got a couple of examples here. Um, if you've got a, a para-virtualized VM with a single vCPU, one network interface and one VBD, um, you can only run 225 of those VMs on your host. And then if you try and start at 226, you're going to get a pretty horrible error message saying you run out of event channels if you can, if you can read the error message. Um, even worse, uh, if we consider another scenario um, with, with an HVM guest, um, fully virtualized but with PV drivers, um, and um, with one vCPU, one, one VIF, which is a network interface, and three VBDs, virtual block devices, which are, uh, which are the, the disks. Uh, and that's a pretty common scenario for... Um, 
uh, for, for desktop virtualization. So with the Zen desktop product uh, that Citrix produce, um, this is a, a kind of typical scenario where each VM will have three virtual disks. Uh, and in that scenario, you can only run 150 VMs per host. So no matter what the size of your hardware is, you just can't go beyond 150 VMs in that configuration. So what do we do about this? Uh, in Zen 7.6.2, um, well, we did a bit of a hack. It's a bit embarrassing, so I won't go into the details of what the hack is. But basically, it allowed us to enjoy uh, four times the number of event channels in DOM0. Um, there was a, a kind of special case uh, that we, we put in um, uh, that would, would treat DOM0 differently to, to other domains. Uh, and obviously, that then um, gave us uh, a much more comfortable uh, margin for how many VMs we could run on a host. Um, and that was enough to, to tie us over. And in the future, well, I'll refer back to David's presentation from this morning. Uh, there, are, there are some ideas floating around um, about changing the ABI um, to provide basically an unlimited number of event channels. And so this is, uh, this is very promising to completely remove that half limit. OK, if you didn't run into that limit, you might have run into this limit. So this is uh, a limit with block tap 2. Block tap 2 is. Uh, a kernel module that Zen Server uses for, uh, in its storage data path for, um, for reading VHD files and things like that. Um, and we found that BlockTap 2 only supported 1,024 devices. So um, there was this, uh, this hash define in the code there. Uh, but each, uh, each virtual block device you want to have requires one of these um, devices in DOM0. And so using the same scenario as I had before, if you've got three disks per VM, then um, you can only have 341 VMs per host before you, you run out of these devices. Well, so what can we do? It was a hash, hash to find 1,024. What's the harm in, in doubling that? So we doubled it, and nothing seemed to break. So uh, we've now got 682 uh, before we run out of them. In the future, we might be running away from block tap to um, so uh, you know, the, the limit would then be avoided in a different way. But uh, in the meantime, uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be any problems just uh, bumping that hash to find up uh, if we need to. So if you didn't run out of event channels, if you didn't run out of uh, block tap to minor numbers, you might have run out of uh, AIO requests. Because again, with block tap 2, um, it creates, when, you, when, you, um, when, you, when it's uh, setting up a new virtual block device, it creates an AIO context that can receive 402 events. Uh, I haven't got the, uh, the rationale behind that here, but it's, there's, a, there's a set of hash defines that end up with a number 402. Um, and there's a system-wide uh, syscuttle that defines the total number of AIO requests you can have at any one time, and that's just less than half a million. And again, if you do the division, uh, that means you're going to run out if you have 368 of, of these VMs that have three disks each. Uh, again, though, this is something that can be changed. So, so we worked around this uh, pretty simply. It's just a syscuttle thing that you can, you, can, you can change. And we bumped it up to uh, a million. Um, uh, and we've, we've therefore pushed that limit back a bit. And it looks like you can, uh, you can keep on pushing that back. Um, uh, there, are, there are, of course, implications to that. But um, it, it looks like running at a million uh, is a fairly safe number. In the future, we could think about um, disaggregation and perhaps splitting DOM0 up into, into different storage driver domains and therefore um, multiplying out this number in, into separate domains uh, if we really find that this is a problem in the future. OK, hard limit number four. I should have warned you, there's, there's seven. So uh, you can, uh, <laughs> if you're taking notes, this is number four. Uh, so this is, a, this is a limitation with Windows VMs um, because the default before uh, Zen Server 6.2 came along was to use receive side copy, which is, um, uh, I think it's protocol one in the, uh, uh, in the net front, net back uh, protocol. And what that does, um, if you look at the net back code, it allocates 20, or it starts off with um, at least 22 grant table entries uh, for each virtual interface that you have, um, because it, it's, it's setting up these um, um, it, it's, 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 it's granting this memory from DOM0 to the guest. Um, and so um, because you've got a total of 8,000 grant table entries in total, you're, you're going to pretty quickly run out when there's all this, all this granting going on from DOM0. It's not too bad when, uh, when, it, when it's happening the other way around and when um, you're just doing 
22 grant table entries per domain, but if, you're, if all your 22 per domain are all coming out of DOM0, then that's a problem. And here the limit comes out as 372 VMs, if, if each of them just have one interface. So in Zen 062, well, we were toying with the idea of um, bumping up the number of grant table entries so we could support more VMs. But actually, for other reasons that I won't go into here, we're not using received our copy as the default anymore. Um, so actually, that problem's gone away. Number five, Zen study. So uh, Zen study uses uh, select. And um, select is, is pretty limited because it can only listen on 1,024 file descriptors, and that's, um, that's not something that can be easily changed. Um, don't ask me why there's that limit, but, um, but that limit exists. Um, and the problem there is that QMU opens three file descriptors to Zenstaldi per VM. So, so you know, each, each um, HVM guest that you're running requires three file descriptors. So um, after you've removed a bit of the overhead, 333 VMs per host is what you can then run. Um, but what we identified in Zen Server 6.2 was that uh, two of those, those file descriptors were being used for watches. So it was pretty point, it was a pretty heavyweight thing to have a whole connection open just to do just to watch a particular thing. And so, um, so there was a patch um, uh, that I think Frediano wrote, I don't know if he's, if he's in the room, um, to, uh, to combine two of those watches um, uh, just to share a connection. Sorry? Uh, so I don't know. I think I can't remember what the other one was for, but I think you know, in principle, they could have all shared a connection. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, no, I, I don't. I don't know what the reason for that was. Um, but anyway, in the future, I'm led to believe, and maybe some of you know, know better than I do. I'm led to believe that upstream QMU um, doesn't connect to SenseStore at all, and it, 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 it gets this information in other ways. Um, and if that's the case, then um, then we don't have to worry about this limit anymore because. Um, um, Zen study won't have anywhere near as many, many connections to it then. There's a very similar problem also with console D that we, we came across, because console D uh, uses select as well. So um, because each PV domain opens three FDs, I guess those are standard input, output, and error, um, you again get this limit of about 341 VMs. Uh, this one was worked around, there was a patch um, I can't remember who, uh, who wrote that patch, um, that converted console D to use poll uh, rather than select, which, which doesn't have this, this limit of 1,024. Okay, on to number seven. Uh, the final one in my list is DOM0 low memory. So we found um, uh, empirically that each running VM will consume about one megabyte of DOM0 low memory. Uh, and so when you subtract the amount of low memory that other things are using, you're left with about 650 VMs uh, that you can run on your host. And, and obviously, if you run out of low memory, then um, you know, bad things are going to happen. You're going to get the oom killer kicking in and almost certainly killing completely the wrong thing. Uh, and that's not going to be pleasant. The reason, obviously, for this, I mean, I mean you know, talking about low mem is perhaps quite an antiquated thing these days because um, using a 64-bit DOM0 will, would avoid this problem. Um, you've got a nice um, homogeneous uh, DOM0 memory address space, um, so that problem will go away in the future. Right, let's, let's take a step back. So I've listed seven things there. Um, this, this table here is an attempt to summarize the, um, these limits because I, I've, I've kind of been throwing out all these numbers, um, but you know, what I cared about was to make sure that we were able to push back all of these numbers to a sufficient level that um, running VMs or you know, various kind of reasonable, configura reasonable configurations of VMs would allow you to run a large number of them. So this, this slide shows an example where you've got eight VM guests that have one vCPU, one VPD, which is a disk, and one uh, virtual network interface. Um, I've got PV drivers for those, um, those I.O. devices. And the table here shows the number of VMs you can run in these different Zen server versions before you run out of these, these seven different resources. So you can see here, and the bottom line there in the Zen server 6.1 column uh, says that the, the bottom line is 225 VMs before you, you, you run out. In this case, the thing you're going to run out of first is DOM0 event channels. 
Uh, but you can see there that uh, the story is a lot happier uh, in Zen 062. The limit is up to 500. Uh, and that's the point at which um, you start running out of Zen Store D um, uh, connections um, because of that issue that was, that was mentioned earlier. But in the future, um, the picture is looking pretty rosy. Um, none of those seven things will apply anymore. So um, the limit is going to be much higher. Um, I'm certain there'll be an eighth thing to add to this list. So when you come back to the Zen Summit next year, maybe I can tell you about number eight. Um, but you know, it's clearly going to be um, hopefully quite a lot in excess of 500. A second scenario, if we had three disks on our VM, the number was even worse on Zen Server 6.1. Uh, you only have, had 150 of those VMs uh, that you could run on your host before you run out. Uh, now we're back up to 500. So therefore, we've been able to, um, to, have our, uh, to, to stay at a supported limit of, of 500 VMs. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. um, so for, for, for power virtualized VMs, um, the numbers look a little bit different. Um, again, the problem was event channels. Um, that, that was the first thing you were going to run into. Um, and now that problem's gone away. The other problems here have been mitigated. Uh, and the first thing you're going to run into there is, is the low memory problem. Um, and again, uh, that problem and the other remaining ones there <coughs> are also uh, being mitigated in various ways um, in the future. So I'm expecting um, a subsequent Zen server release to, to have an even higher number of supported power virtualized VMs. So uh, I mentioned there we've got 500 um, as our supported limit, and that's actually practically possible. So here's a screenshot from, um, from the Zen server's graphical interface showing 500, in this case, XP VMs, but you know, any, any VMs would have done. Um, and uh, they're all running there. Um, and um, they were pretty responsive. So this, um, uh, talking about the responsiveness of the VMs there now, brings me on to my next topic, which is about the soft limits. So I've shown that it is possible now to, you know, in theory, to run this number of VMs. But how well do they perform? You know, can we actually practically use them? Um, you know, if you're doing real workloads in them, you know, those, those VMs in, in that screenshot were all idle. You know, if it was in a practical scenario, uh, would they be usable? So the answer was, uh, was no uh, in Zen Server 6.1, but um, we've been able to overcome a few of the, the soft limits in 6.2, and let me tell you about them now. So uh, I guess um, certainly if you're a Zen Server user, um, this, this will be a very familiar picture to you if you're, if you're the kind of person who runs top. Zen Store D using a huge amount of CPU there. Um, what's it doing? Well, firstly, is it actually a problem? Is it a problem? Well, let me show you this, this graph here, which um, is a screenshot from our, our GUI um, that shows the um, CPU utilization uh, on the vertical axis against time on the horizontal axis. What we are doing here is boosting uh, a large number of VMs sequentially. Um, and you can see that um, the, the lines I'm pointing to there around the middle of that graph are the DOM0 vCPUs. So there you know, the, the rate of them there in this test. Uh, and they were you know, taking up around 50%, 50 you know, give or take, um, each of them. Um, now, what I did then was um, actually separated out uh, Zen Store D to have its own DOM0 vCPU. So using task sets, um, put, you know, make, make Zen Store D have its own CPU that's dedicated to itself. And what we see there is that the graph changes slightly because that one DOM0 vCPU, the one that's running Zen Store D, actually goes to 100%. So because it's running at 100%, that's a very clear indicator that actually this is, this is a bottleneck here. That's going to be slowing things down. There's going to be things that are trying to poke Zen store for various reasons that are going to be, going to be delayed because you know, it's running at maximum capacity here. So what were those things? Um, and, and could we remove them? Well, the answer is yes, we could. Um, basically, there was a variety of things. So we, we had a good look at all the things that were um, interacting with Zen store in Zen server. There were quite a few spurious writes going on, things that um, uh, perhaps didn't need to be, be written. Uh, we, had, we had a load of um, things being written by, um, by the VMs, reporting back various monitoring information. Um, 
and um, that, that was causing quite a lot of, of Zenstar activity, um, and um, it was arguable that that was um, uh, perhaps of, of limited value relative to the, the cost here um, that it was, it was imposing on the system. Uh, and the second kind of class of, of things we were able to do here was to r replace polling with watching. So in the past, uh, we had some, some processes that were naively um, asking Zenstore, is this, is this key here, is this key here, is this key here? And that was just, just imposing a lot of load on, on the daemon. Um, and you know, there was a perfectly good solution sitting there waiting to be implemented, which is to use Zenstore watches. So we've been able to replace quite a lot of the, the tool stack um, code that was just doing this naive polling to, to do some uh, to watches so they get, it gets notified when, when the thing it's interested in changes. And so those things combined um, really reduced the CPU utilization of Zenstore D, and that made a big difference. OK, the second thing, uh, QMU. So when you're running HVM guests, um, again, this is a, a pretty common site. But at first glance, um, uh, this might not look too bad, but you may, uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you will probably spot uh, the, the load average there, which is completely through the roof, <laughs> which is perhaps a sign that something uh, not so good is going on. Um, but each of the QMU processes there is only using 3%. So, you know, it's not too bad, is it? But actually, the VMs that were running here, the, the Windows VMs, um, were actually basically idle. They weren't running anything. Um, so what, what was QMU doing? Um, and if you think about it, if you're trying to run, say, 200 VMs, and if they're all idle, if each of those QMU processes is using 3%, then 3% times 200 VMs is 600%. So you're completely wasting six whole DOM0 vCPUs just to basically do nothing because these, these VMs are idle. They don't need anything being done by QMU. So um, this, is a, this is clearly a complete waste of hardware. Um, so, well, we wanted to know what it was that QMU was doing and, and could, we, could we fix this? So, um, so we did some analysis and um, looked at the different um, events. So, so you know, a simple S trace of QMU would have shown you that um, it was busy processing events. It wasn't um, you know, every, every few microseconds it was, it was waking up to process, um, to process another event. And this table here shows a summary of what those events were. So there's a variety of different emulated devices there. Um, and quite clearly from that table, the big hitter was USB. So um, it was, you know, typ typ this is just one set of measurements, but it's typical that um, you'd be processing around 220 QMU events um, to do with the, the USB bus per second. Um, and just the, the sheer weight of, of processing those events, coupled with all these other ones here, um, you know, that was what was causing that 3% um, kind of uh, ambient temperature of QMU. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's one of those things in that list there is the, is the buffer I.O. That was something that there, there was already uh, um, a patch, I think, from, from Stefano, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm right in saying that, um, to, to, to convert that to use an event channel rather than using, uh, rather than doing this via QMU. Um, and that seemed like a much, much cleaner solution anyway. So, um, uh, so that got rid of 13 QMU events per VM per second. Um, the other things there are all emulated devices that could be disabled. And actually, a lot of them are completely pointless. So you know, who, who needs a parallel port and a serial port um, on their VM, especially when it's not connected to anything? Uh, so you know, that's, you know, we saved one, one event there per second. Um, the QMU monitor in Zen server, we're not using that for anything. Who needs that? Um, and the CD-ROM, well, just the presence of having a CD-ROM there, even if there's a drive there, even if there's not a CD-ROM, you know, an ISO inserted into that drive, um, obviously these Windows VMs were, were kind of polling that, saying, is, is there a CD in the drive? And um, so actually not having a drive there at all saved us 38 events per second. But the big one was, was USB. So we've, we've provided an option in Zen Server 6.2 to not emulate uh, a USB controller. Um, and actually, for a lot of our customers, that's completely fine. Um, if, you're, um, 
the, the, only, the only thing really that we, uh, that, that would cause a problem for, um, for a lot of our customers was um, the, um, uh, the USB tablet device for, for doing absolute positioning um, in our graphical user interface um, you know, when, you're, when you're viewing the VM's console. Um, but actually, a, a large number of people don't, don't use that console. Um, if, you're, if you're providing, say, a, a virtual desktop environment, then your, your user is going to be connecting over some protocol like um, remote desktop or, or perhaps an ICA protocol or something like that. So, so actually that... Been a dramatically improved upstream in QMU, so you just need to be on a newer QMU version because now we detect when the device is idle and we throttle down the hidden polling intervals. So if you go to a newer version of QMU and the device isn't actively being used, those will go away completely. Okay, so that was uh, um, a claim that in future, in, in, in the modern versions of QMU, this problem has been solved, um, which is great to hear. Thank you very much. There's also a PD USB stack in uh, Zen Client that we don't yep. have but we have the Windows yep. uh, front Yep, so that's and clearly a way. Yeah. desire to upstream that, that if we just haven't gotten... PV USB won't help, it's actually the device. So Windows is pulling on the device based on the hit timeout setting of the device. Ah. So there's no... So, USB sucks, like there's no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredible what, what the guest must be doing. USB's PV hit is that it's the it's the hardware, right? So yeah. uh, 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 a real, actual, honest-to-God USB controller doesn't work properly unless you constantly go to it and say, hello, 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 hello. hello. Yep. So that's what Windows does. So you've got a lot of VMs saying hello to their USB yeah. controllers, indeed. Yeah. So uh, what version of, of uh, KMU? Uh, something modern, I don't know, one five, one six, something relatively recent. It's not that new. So... That, that was that was the main way in which we reduced the um, Dom Zero CPU load in uh, in Dom Zero. Um, <coughs> let me move on then to talking about benchmarks, so um, I can hopefully quantify some of these improvements. So you will recall we've 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 pushed the hard limits right now. Now it's just a case of eking out as many VMs as we can, um, you know, before you know before the performance starts to degrade. So. Um, I've got a couple of benchmarks. The first one here is uh, Bootstorm. So Bootstorm uh, is, is the word we, re we use to refer to starting a lot of VMs uh, at the same time, in, in, you know, booting them all in as short a time as possible and measuring how long it took to boot them. This is actually quite a, quite a, good, um, uh, quite a good benchmark um, when you're talking about measuring VM density, um, how well do, I, do lots of VMs perform. You've got... Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in DOM0 during a boot. You've got the, the tool stack um, churning away. You've got a lot of Zenstar activity. Um, you've got a lot of um, uh, your QMU process will be doing a lot of um, emulation before your PV drivers have kicked in, perhaps. So it's actually quite a good workout for, for the system. Um, and you can see here from this graph, uh, so we're starting um, 25 VMs at a time and, and doing 90 in total. These are um, Windows 7 VMs. Uh, and the... the um, uh, the, the vertical axis on this graph here shows uh, the time at which the VM had finished fully booting, so it's, it's completely ready to use. And um, the red line there was uh, Zen 061, the blue line is Zen 062. So you know, primarily due to these improvements that I've been describing, it actually made quite a considerable difference there, and it made a 60% made a improvement on the total time to boot 90 VMs. How about 120 VMs? Well, the story is even better. It, the gap's now, uh, now been closed by 75%. Um, you can see there that it was starting to get pretty slow um, in, in the red line there um, after you got 100 VMs. Um, you know, things were really starting to choke up in DOM0. You you know, the load average would have been like on that slide earlier. It was just going completely through the roof, and there was no, you know, there was no sign of, of recovery there. But um, it's a lot more linear now uh, in, in 6.2. Okay, 120 VMs. What about starting 200 VMs? Well, uh, there's two things to say here. We, we, we couldn't do the measurement on Zen 061 because we were running into those hard limits that I referred to earlier. Um, so, you know, all, all we get is that red line kind of tailing off horribly and then, and then suddenly stopping. Um, the blue line, however, does carry on because, because we can now run 200 VMs quite comfortably. Um, and on this, this hardware, um, it took only 13 minutes to, to boot them all. Um, which you, know, you can see, well, maybe it's going up slightly, but it's, it's pretty linear, uh, certainly a lot more linear than the, the red line. 
what's What's the step function here? What's right, so, so George is asking why, why these lines are stepped. It's because I'm doing tw I'm 25 VMs at a time. So that means I'm, um, so I'm, I'm using the Zen Server's tool stack to um, have 25 um, outstanding um, VM starts uh, at any one time. So I, from, from the word go, I say here's 25 VMs to start, please. And then you know, gradually they'll all start, and then eventually the whole stack will say, "Okay, they, they, you know, the first one's done, the second one's done, and actually all those 25 will finish about the same time." So then my next 25 will then start. So that's why you get this kind of step effect because they, they tend to go in batches when you're using this approach. Uh, and this is actually um, the approach that um, Zen Sensor, the, the the GUI, takes when you're starting VMs. So if you if you select all your all your 500 VMs and you click start, it'll do them in batches of 25. What sort of storage is this box? What sort of storage? Ah, that's a good question. Yeah, it was, I think it was it was local SSDs. Yeah, um, I mean it, it probably probably wouldn't have been too different if we'd um, if we'd had it on on shared storage. Um, but, but yeah, sure. Okay, I think we've got time for for one final benchmark. Um, so this is uh, a benchmark called Login VSI. So login VSI, let, let me talk about what the benchmark is before I talk about the graph. Uh, login VSI is a benchmark that's very commonly used in uh, desktop virtualization. Um, it, um, uh, it simulates a, a pretty, it's a pretty basic simulation of a kind of office worker. So in each, in each of the Windows VMs that you have, it'll run um, essentially an identical workload, although there's some elements of randomness. Um, it'll run things like Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint and Outlook and, you know, kind of common office user applications, trying to simulate what a kind of uh, a user of a, of a virtual desktop environment would, would do. Um, and it, uh, and the, the way the benchmark works is that um, you kind of have an, have an idea in mind of how many VMs you want to run, and then it'll tell you how close you came to that or how many VMs were able to run at an acceptable level of performance uh, up to that number you wanted. So, so that what this graph here does is summarizes um, a, a load of measurements using this benchmark. Uh, and you can see that on Zen Server 6.1, um, you know, if, I, if I wanted to run 80 VMs, actually all 80 ran fine. Uh, it goes pretty linearly there. Um, but the, the point at which I try and run more than about 105 VMs, Suddenly, I find that you know, if I'm trying to run 106, none of them live up to the, the benchmark's expectations about what an acceptable level of performance is. So that's why that, that completely dives down there to zero. In 6.2, uh, it's a much more healthy story. Um, we're able to get way over 300, in fact, um, before you even start finding that even one or two VMs aren't performing to an acceptable level. And actually, uh, the second thing to notice is you actually don't have this big dive down anymore because um, DOM zero load is not just completely going through the roof and, and causing the whole system to collapse. And actually now it does sort of scale a bit more, a bit more gracefully. Um, and so this, this graph goes as far as showing 400 VMs and um, 300 of them were still running, running well. And the, the gap there from 300 to 400 could even just be due to exhausting the, um, the CPU capacity of this machine. You know, maybe it wasn't even really possible to get much more than that in theory. Um, you say number of VMs performing exceptionally. Yeah. Um, are we to interpret this graph to mean then that you gave it 400 VMs, 300 of them performed still within exceptional limits, and 100 of them were useless? Um, not, no, uh, yeah. I mean, not, I'm not saying useless, um, but yeah, you're, you're right to interpret it in that way, that the benchmark has a, kind of, has a notion of what, what acceptable performance is, so it'll do things like measuring how, quick, how quickly my window opened or how quickly and I was able to... the number of VMs that meet that target. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is expected. So, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to run out, even if there's zero virtualization overhead, you're still going to eventually find that all your CPUs are completely saturated um, you know, if you try and run too many. So this is, this is what you'd expect. Any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, I was sort of wondering why does the uh, <coughs> sense D is not switched to using pull? I mean, it's still using select, why? Yeah, uh, 
I don't know. Um, it, I think it could be. Um, so the question was, why can't we use poll like we did with, with the console daemon for Zenstore um, I think we could, but it turns out that problem's going away anyway um, if, um, if, we're not, if we're no longer connecting with QMU to Zenstore then um, we don't have to worry about that being a limit. So 1,024 file descriptors on Zenstore will be fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, I asked because I, I did both, both patch. Zen console story and Zen console story, you, you seem to pick up only one. I don't know. Why. Oh, okay. <laughs> I understand. Okay. Uh, of course, yeah, we're using a different version of Zen story ah, okay. in, in Zen server. Yeah. Um, this last graph, do you know how it compares to a KVM, a similar scenario? No. Uh, so the question was, do I know how this compares to KVM? Uh, no, I don't have a, I don't have good quality um, analysis of uh, other hypervisors. Um, I'd be surprised if they were much better than this, uh, but, but I, I, I don't want to speculate because I don't know. It is, it is something that we'd like to like to know, and I think um, it is actually something that could could be measured using our our, our measurement infrastructure. So uh, it might be interesting to try and find that out. Any more questions? Benchmarks with spec for that are doing a larger number of VMs than this with KVM. So you can look at spec for it. Yeah. Numbers. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> run, Forest, run. Uh, in your uh, previous slide, about uh, boot time, yep. uh, can you talk about uh, what you have done uh, uh, mainly to uh, decrease your boot time? Uh, time? Yeah, so, so it's, it's really just the things that I've mentioned in the presentation here. Um, primarily it's about reducing DOM zero load. So the reason, the reason that the red line is, is shooting up in the air is because DOM zero was too busy. So there's too many VMs trying to cause too many things to happen in DOM zero. Zom Zero was maxing out its CPUs, the load average was going sky high, um, and so all we needed to do was um, quieten things down in Dom Zero. So actually, it, we, we've got to the point now where um, um, certainly the, the, um, the QMU optimizations that I, I mentioned, it, not emulating all those, those devices, we got to the point where um, the load average is basically zero even when you're running hundreds of VMs. So you know that's clearly where you want to be. Um, there's no reason for Dom Zero to be doing anything when your VMs are just sitting there idle, and that's now the position that we're at. For example, you, you told that uh, uh, the main reason that uh, one QMU process or uh, uh, use uh, uh, three percent of the CPU uh, utilization of Dom Zero is because USB. So uh, in uh, Zen uh, six point two uh, release, you just uh, disabled USB. Uh, no, we haven't disabled USB, but we've given the option for people to disable it. So, so uh, but you, you can also disable USB in uh, one, a six one, right? Uh, so, uh, in Zenzo six one, there was no there was no option through the tool stack to enable you to disable USB. So, if you wanted to do that, you would have needed to know which files to go and edit in DOM zero to to cause USB to not be emulated. And you know, now we've actually made that a much more public interface. And, and we're writing documentation that explains how to do this. Okay, so, so this is now a, a normal thing. And alternatively, 6.1 would be to go the control panel, if you Yeah. Yeah, so you could have actually disabled USB controller from within your VMs by going to Device Manager or, or if you're in Windows. Yeah. All right, we're, we're running yeah. out of time. I think one more question, if there is one. How many cores did down zero have? So in, in this testing here, um, I think we had um, eight VCP I didn't. I didn't mention it there. I think we had eight VCPUs in DOM zero there, um, but actually, you know, it wouldn't have been too bad with with fewer than that. I think. And certainly, you don't need eight when when all the VMs are running. It's only you only need a lot of VCPUs if you're trying to do a lot of a lot of booting in in a short period of time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.